Hey everyone, Jared VK3BL here, and as part of our Yaesu FT817 and 818 accessories series, I wanted to give you a sneak peek of another item we'll be reviewing. It's actually one of a pair, the second one hasn't arrived yet, but hopefully it will in the coming few weeks, and we'll be able to do the full review and face off if you like. Um, and basically what it is, is a little QRP um, solid state power amplifier. In this case, the first unit that's arrived is the Mic X-Ray Papa 50M or 50 mic HF power amplifier. It takes about five to six watts in and gives you somewhere between 30 to 45 watts out, depending on how concerned you are with your signal purity and, ba and which band you're using, all those sort of factors. But today I've set it up so that my 818 is putting out uh, a signal on the 40 meter band, which is 30 dB down on a white noise plot um, in terms of IMD3 uh, and the rest. And we're gonna see what happens when we switch the amp on. Now, I'll give you a little sneak peek. The amp does broaden the signal slightly. Um, so we might be overdriving it a little bit, but certainly not to any terrible extent. So without much further, well, sorry, I should mention one last thing. The final uh, transistor used in both this amplifier and the other one we've ordered is the Motorola MRF-186. So it's the uh, Mike Romeo Foxtrot 186 um, MOSFET. Um, and it's quite a nice little uh, um, power, uh, power transistor in that it's rated at 24 volts. So even though these little amplifiers don't have any output prote protection, um, you get a little bit of that by having a higher voltage rated part than your typical 12 volt, um, uh, you know, final transistor. I should mention that both this unit and the other unit that we'll be basically doing a comparison on and a full review on, they both use, um, sorry, they both include full band filtering for bands between 80 meters and 10 meters. So all in all, a lovely little unit. This one's very popular. It's got a nice heat sink up the top. So without much further ado, I'm gonna show you a quick um, spectrum plot, but um, you know, with, uh, sorry, um, with the radio running with the amplifier off and then with the amplifier in line. So anyway, I'll, I'll go straight to it. Okay guys. What you're seeing here is my SDR Play RSP2's um, band scope and waterfall. And I've set up my FT818 to make about 4 watts pep, or so my meter says. Now, I don't, being a QRO guy, I don't own a particularly accurate meter for low power, um, but that doesn't matter for this demonstration. So, firstly, I'll key the radio up. We're running white noise. And you can see here that. Um, you know, it's quite clean. These are your peak tones, if you will, and these are your IMD products. So they're what you, I guess, call the skirts. And roughly speaking, you can say that your main IMD products um, are about, on each side, the same as your transmitted bandwidth. And that's why a lot of people are against extended SSB or ESSB, because for every, um, you know, couple of, couple of hundred hertz you widen this signal, you also widen or create greater potential to have interfering parts of your signal, especially in strong signal conditions. We're talking about QRP here, so it's not going to be a problem. Anyway, let me draw your attention to this figure here, um, which is the measured power um, from the RS, uh, SDR Play RSP2. And it's approximately negative 35, uh, negative 38.5, sorry, decibel milliwatts. These SDR plays, they're accurate to about one decibel milliwatt, give or take. Um, so anyway, without much further ado, let's write down negative 38.5 and see what happens when we flick on the amp. Okay, we've flicked on the amp. We're now getting negative 27. Point, well, I'm going to say 0.5, it does fluctuate a little bit, but negative 27.5 decibel milliwatts. So that's about an 11 decibel gain from flicking the amplifier on. Now, you may have noticed there's not as much headroom between the um, unwanted products, the IMD, and your wanted signal, but it's still very good. Um, if I'll try and estimate here, one, two, three, 
three. Oh, sorry, start again. One, two, three, four, five. Just over five. So five times five. It's slightly better than negative twenty-five decibel uh, dBc. We call it de um, decibel um, compared to one of your um, centre tones. So. Uh, that's that's still really really good. Yes, we have lost about five decibel of cleanliness, if you will. But when you're only putting out, uh, you know, uh, over 40 watts, that's unlikely to be a problem. It's certainly a lot cleaner than some commercially made amplifiers um, that can be rated as bad as negative 18 dBc. Believe it or not. Um, I'm talking about the Ameritron ALS 500M, which is a 500 watt amplifier designed for car use, and you're certainly going to notice that. Um, that make that would make the signal look, uh, look a heck of a lot worse. So, I'm really happy with that. This is a 40 meter band. I will be doing, um, you know, further further uh, rev uh, further analysis of this amplifier. I'm going to see if I can get it to be a little bit cleaner, what the trade offs are, all that sort of thing when I compare it to the other one um, that we're importing. Now the other one uh, you may have seen on eBay, it's a, a black box, it looks a little bit smaller. The main differences are it offers automatic band uh, selection, so it follows your radio around between 80 and 10, but it does use the same final, final transistor, the MRF, uh, so, yeah, yeah, MRF 186 um, by Motorola, Micro Mio Foxtrot 186, um, Motorola MOSFET transistor, a 24 volt rated part, and it also has full uh, filtering between the 80 meter band and the 10 meter band, which is really good. A lot of the cheap Chinese amplifiers, they don't have any output filtering, and uh, they're really, really, really dirty when you get them on, uh, on air. Um, and when I say that, I'm not actually referring to them being dirty here. Uh, these are all third, fifth, seventh, uh, 11th order products. What I'm referring to is basically the second, fourth, sixth um, uh, order IMD products. Now they're actually in the next band. So if you don't have output filtering on an amplifier and you transmit on 40 meters, someone might hear you on 20 meters. They might also hear you on um, 10 meters. So basically, at under 200 US dollars, this amplifier is really, really good. And I can't wait to pit it against the other one. Uh, as I said, the other model has um, automatic band selection, but it doesn't have an external fin to heat sink like this one does. So I suspect, as long as you don't mind turning a knob to select your band, which you really shouldn't, um, this one's going to be the winner, uh, especially for data modes where, you know, if you're holding the, the key down, maybe JT65 or even Whisper, FT8, either one should be fine. Um, you could attach a little fan too. So, yeah, anyway, please stay QRV for our uh, our face-off. We'll go into a lot more detail. I'm expecting that to be uh, quite a long episode. But in a nutshell, if you can't be bothered waiting for that, um, I'd have absolutely no problem recommending the Mic X-Ray Dash um, Papa 50 Mic um, mobile, well, uh, QRP HF amplifier coming out of China.